Hey everyone, it's Chris, the PDX Picker. Welcome back to another video from the Little Shop of Hoarders. We're going to pull some orders that I sold on eBay and talk about some interesting ways that I have been sourcing lately. And I think that you should stick around to find out about that. So just after the intro song, we're going to pull those orders, talk about that new way that I'm sourcing, and just talk about the reselling life in general. So stick around. Wanna buy that Farrah Fawcett poster? There's dispensers and a toaster, don't know why. That kind of stuff you throw away, I'll sell on eBay. All right, so we have eight items going out that sold for me over the past couple of days. A couple of good items, a couple of, you know, not so great items. Uh, actually, there's ten total because there's two that I'm just not going to pull because they are so minor. So let's go ahead and start pulling some orders. We'll get to that topic right when we pull that first item that I sold that I found in sourcing my new method. So first item that sold is a pair of Miss Me jeans. I found these at a yard sale for $5. And um, I think that is definitely, at least for me, the way to go when it comes to sourcing Miss Me jeans because the market on those seems to be in the mid $20 range. And... Almost all the thrift stores around me that have Miss Me jeans, they are charging at least $12 to $15. So that's just obviously not great profit, but, um, but $5 for this pair, and it sold pretty quickly. Here they are right here. This is specifically the uh, Mid-Rise Easy Boot Cut. Um, paid $5, sold for $22.45 plus shipping on those. Really good condition. Here you can see mid-rise, easy boot cut. So, I think there's still a market for Miss Me jeans, as long as you can... Well, I, well, that's a silly thing. There's definitely a market for Miss Me jeans. They're always... I, well, I mean, they're still selling well, but uh, you got to get them for the right price. That's for sure. All right, we are going into... Um, Another item that I purchased at this yard sale, it turned out to be a really good sale. I kind of figured it would be because of just the quantity of old, cool items that were there. This is right here in box 24, the item that sold. This is a Marks toy. It's called the Jumpin' Jeep. Put it on the table and hopefully we'll get a better view of it. Wasn't in great condition. These can sell pretty well if they are in really nice condition. I think probably the super nice condition ones can sell for over $100. Um, this one here. This one here has a little bit of a condition issue. He, This guy is missing half of his head. And just in general... I don't think it works. This, there's a spring on here. Basically how it's supposed to work, it's a wind-up toy. You turn that key down there, wind it up, this spring tightens up, and this would drive along, and these guys would pop up and down. That's why it's called the jumping Jeep. Or, but uh, a lot of good things going with this. A lot of not so good things going with this. Bought it for $5, took an offer, sold it for $30 plus shipping. I think that is now the uh, probably fifth or sixth thing that I've sold um, from that sale. Well, probably the fourth thing. Sold a uh, Mattel Electronics auto racing game. I sold a McCoy vase. That, I don't know, maybe there was another one. Anyway, it was a very good sale. I was happy to come across it. Here's a little, just a little sale. And it's kind of funny how these things can sell. So this right here is a a hat. Hopefully that comes through well. It's from the 60s G.I. Joe Marine Dress White hat. Picked this up in a lot of other uh, G.I. Joe style toys. Probably paid around a dollar for this and it sold for $9.95 plus shipping just for that little hat. Pretty crazy how that works in my opinion. All right, so now we are at the item that sold and it is in 3BC. So, a couple of weekends ago? I think it was maybe a week and a half ago on the weekend. My two younger sons and I, we were out geocaching. I don't know how many of you know about geocaching. It's super fun. Basically what it is, 
is you um, there's an app on your phone called geocaching. I think there's probably other ones. And what it is, is it's a little bit like a treasure hunt. You follow GPS coordinates to certain areas, and at those areas, there are going to be little hidden uh, log books. So basically, it could be in a box, it could be in a little uh, Rubbermaid container, it could be in a little tiny screw top, like a almost like a film canister size. Some of them are in film canisters. And inside there, sometimes there's little trinkets. Sometimes there's just a little piece of paper that you can write your name on there. You can keep track of the ones that you have found and the ones that you haven't found um, when, through the app. But every location that they're at, they're usually they're hidden somewhere. Sometimes it's relatively easy to find them. You know, it's just behind a pole. Sometimes it's hidden in the middle of a tree somewhere. Anyway, geocaching is super fun. This is not what this video is about. I don't know why I went to that level of detail for geocaching. But um, my middle son and, and I like to do it a lot. My youngest son every now and then comes with us and, and the three of us were out this one day. There was a little bit of a hike to the next geocache to find the next one and along the way we were walking along the side of the road and I looked down and I saw the very um, obvious Oakley symbol on this item. This is an Oakley sunglass case. I was hoping to be super lucky and find a pair of Oakleys inside, but uh, it wasn't. There weren't any, which is okay, no big deal. Um, so my middle son, Jonas, who resells with me, I picked him up and said, oh, the, you know, this is basically like finding a $10 bill on the side of the road. And he thought I was crazy. He said, no, it's not. There's no way that's worth $10. He didn't even think I'd necessarily be able to sell it all, sell it at all. And, and kind of in a funny way, I actually set it down. I needed a little bit of cleaning. There was some like leaf debris in there. So I kind of swept it out with my hands. And, and then I actually set it down on the road, took a picture on the road because uh, it was a nice sunny day, took three photos uh, one of each side, one on the inside, and listed it for, actually listed it for $12.90 free shipping. So, and that's what it sold for, $12.90 free shipping. And uh, so not quite a $10 bill, more like a $6 bill or $7 bill. <laughs> but still, you know, it's one of those things, and that's the, the point of the story, is especially when you're a, uh, uh, when you really are in the reseller mindset, Sometimes you can find places to source anywhere and everywhere. This was practically garbage on the side of the road. More likely somebody just accidentally dropped it. I don't know, maybe they threw it out in a fit of whatever, but uh, but it was just on the side of the road. I picked it up and I said, hey, this would be funny. I'm gonna go ahead and list this and it sold. It's not a ton of money and obviously no, you're not gonna be able to do this regularly. At least I don't think you could. It is just, it just goes to show you that there are all sorts of different ways that you can source out there. And it's not always, it doesn't always have to be the simple uh, go to garage sales, go to thrift stores. What You know, it's, we already know that it's a good idea to sell items in our own house that we don't need or use anymore. And why not go ahead and ask our friends, ask our family, ask our neighbors, hey, do you guys have any things that you are wanting to get rid of and no longer need? And um, maybe we're thinking of donating. Hey, how about you donate to me? I know that there's no tax write-off for that, and some people wouldn't necessarily be keen on doing that. But the, just the moral of the story, and, and it doesn't even matter if that is the, a great idea or the worst idea. The point of it is just think of different ways to source that are outside the box because you just never know what... Um, ways are going to work and what, what things can really take your business to a whole nother level. Sure, finding things on the side of the road is not going to be that thing, I can almost guarantee you. But again, that's not the point of the story. Just think outside the box. Although, on another side note, um, my son and I were actually out disc golfing the other day. I don't I think that came through, but I went like this, disc golfing. So we like to geocache, we like to disc golf. I guess we're a little bit on the uh, alternative hobby kick. But uh, we were disc golfing the other day, and I looked over and I saw this on the ground. It was this right here. It was actually on the bottle. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Good to Grow uh, juice bottles, I think they are. I think it's juice. But they all come with these uh, straw lids 
that are they have some sort of tie-in to pop culture. And some of these are actually pretty valuable. Well, I don't know about valuable, but they have decent value when it comes to it. Sorry, this is just not focusing well. So we'll go back to me. But uh, I found this, and this is the Bumblebee character from Transformers. It's a little bit of a... It kind of reminds me of the old school, like, G1, 1980s um, cartoon version of Bumblebee. Not the more recent movie version. And I decided, you know what? I'll take a look, see if it's worth anything. And that's to be determined whether it's worth anything. I'm probably going to actually put this on auction. It might sell for 99 cents. It might sell for $10. It might sell for $40. It might not sell at all. I don't know. But I'm going to give it a shot. And again, I just found this on the ground. Um, did a little bit of cleaning in the process, a little bit of litter pickup, and hopefully we'll make a little bit of money um, in the process. Again, <laughs> I'm not advocating that this is the way for you all to source. It's just... Something that kind of worked for me one time, and maybe it'll work for me again. And it's just that notion, think outside of the box when it comes to your sourcing opportunities. Um, if you are in an area where there are a ton of garage sales and your thrift stores are cheap, you, you don't really need to do that. Um, just do those typical ways and you're going to do just fine. But sometimes in places like where I live, where the thrift stores are almost outrageously expensive, and the garage sales are more and more trending towards that as well, um, meaning like the prices that people are charging at their garage sales are almost shocking in some ways. But um, anyway, just go ahead and, and maybe try new things along the way. One of them might work and it might work really well. My dogs are barking like crazy. I'm gonna go let them in the house. So a little bit of an update on the house that are in our neighborhood that's being built. They have added walls. We started the process of walls. So it's moving pretty quickly. I think it was about a week since the last time I showed you. And um, they're already making a big... They're already making a bunch of progress. So uh, it's a little bit of a cloudy day here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. You can see there's a lot of uh, dark clouds. It rained yesterday and only was a high of about 69, 70 degrees. Today it's warmer. It hasn't rained yet. It looks like it could though. Still only about 75 degrees. So yes, the humidity is a teeny bit high, but it's quite beautiful really. Oh no. Look at this. Look at this. We've been really lucky so far this year, and then now we've been hit real bad. The gopher is going to town. I am going to have to get out my trusty cinch traps. Uh, I probably, so, you know, we live on about an acre. Well, we live on an acre here. A lot of grass, and uh, this year is the first, or so far this year, first gophers that we've had on July 30th. Normally we kill about 15 to 20 gophers every summer, sometimes even more than that, so we've been super lucky, but um, trying to dust off the old, the old traps, hopefully figure out a way to trap that guy sooner than later. But, uh, all right, let's go ahead and pull the rest of the order. This next item that's sold, took a chance on it, and it paid off really well. I was at a, a garage sale. There's, I'm sure this is probably more common than I ever really knew. Meaning, I, this probably has been going on for years, and uh, I just never noticed it until I started reselling, but... Kind of surprising to me the number of people that have yard sales every year maybe more than once a year um i don't know where these people acquire their items doesn't seem like a great business model to find things to then resell at a garage sale because you know you're not getting tons of money at garage sales but anyway um this is what sold right here we have a pontiac chieftain radio from around 1949, 1950, 1951. 
it is definitely not in the best of condition, but this part's not too bad. This is the part that would be visible on the car, and then this is the speaker that would be hidden behind the dash, at least somewhat. So, of course, this part looking not super great is, is okay because it'll be hidden, but uh, even says chiefed in there above the 9 and 11. No idea of the functionality of it. Not something that I would be able to test. But it sold for, I picked it up for $5 from this yard sale that this is the second time I've been there. Um, and picked it up for $5 and it sold for $85, $84.95 plus shipping. There's actually another radio that I picked up same uh, at the same sale for also for $5. That's from a, um, I don't want to say it's from a Studebaker or some sort of car like that. And uh, anyway, that, that one hasn't sold yet, but this one... I just took a chance, it just looked cool, and it really paid off. $5 into $85. Um, relatively easy to ship. It's heavy, but it's not super oddly shaped, so that was really cool. Very happy to sell that one. We have one, two, three more items. And kind of surprisingly, this here's my first pair of shoes that sold. Box C2. I picked these up at... C2. I don't have a box. Oh, yeah, I do. I don't know why I put them in here. But uh, picked these up at a yard sale. <clears throat> I don't remember how much I paid for them, so I'm going to look that up here in a second. But here they are. They are a pair of Keens. Keen Ballerina. Um, there's a particular name of these. Keen Kush Aaron Ballerina. Good condition. Somewhere on the soles, but not too bad. Those sold for $30 plus shipping. Let's take a look and see what they, how much I paid for them. Alright, so I must have got those. Must have got those at uh, my favorite thrift store because I paid $7.99 for them. So $8 into $30 plus shipping. We actually have another pair of shoes. I'll go to those next. These are a little bit different. These are the second pair of Linz bowling shoes that I've sold. The first pair was also purchased at my favorite thrift store, but it was new. It had the, even though these are from the 70s, maybe the 80s, um, that pair was actually new. This one I bought with a bowling ball that I already sold. Paid $3 for the bowling ball, $3 for the shoes. Well, I paid $6 for both, so you can split that up however you like. Maybe I could say I spent $5 on the ball and $1 on these. The ball I sold for right around $50. These ones I took a, an offer um, for quite a bit lower than I was originally thinking they would sell for, but if I only consider that I paid a dollar for them, that's not that bad. I sold these for $13 plus shipping. Let me actually show these to you. So there are a little bit of condition issues, um, some scratches here and there, but uh, still a lot of life in them. They're size 9 and a half. The buyer of these actually messaged me a few weeks ago to let me know that, hey, your listing says that these are from a made in an unknown region. Under the item specifics, I think I just sold, did a sell, sell one like this on my listing and the person before that, they didn't say where these shoes were made. Well, these are made in the USA and this, this person messaged me to let me know, hey, you should put that in the item specifics because that be, could be really important to somebody. Which, I mean, okay. I said thank you, and I updated the, the listing, and that was the last I heard from them. Until all of a sudden, uh, out of the blue, they sent me an offer for $13. I didn't actually know it was the same person. But uh, when I accepted the offer, and uh, they actually sent me a message right away, and then when I saw that they sent me a message, I could see the, the message history. Well, the message they sent me, it, <laughs> it's no big deal, it's just funny to me. Um, he was like, please, under no circumstances, put any styrofoam in the packaging when you ship these items. Uh, styrofoam is terrible for the environment, and, and unless the postal employee 
you know, drives over the top of these, there's no real need to put them in anything other than a box. <laughs> Which I have no problems with uh, somebody wanting to be environmentally friendly and not asking for styrofoam. I wasn't going to put styrofoam in there to begin with, but they didn't know that, so sure, why not? Go ahead and send me the, send a message. Um, I think probably the more curious thing is, they. I guess, my guess is they saw that I put the listing up, I think I originally priced them at $25. In fact, I know that's what it was. It was $24.95. They probably thought that that was a little too... Actually, it was $19.95. They probably thought that was a little too much. Uh, and they didn't want to offer me $13 right away. So they went ahead and just kept an eye on the listing. Saw that it hadn't sold. Sold after a few weeks. Sent me the offer that way for $13. And I guess that way I wouldn't be offended by their offer. Anyway, just thought it was interesting that they would message me a few weeks ago and not just offer to buy the item right then and there if they were, in fact, interested. So I don't, I don't pretend to know anything about human behavior, but it is interesting from time to time the way people will act. All right, this next item is a golf club. And this will be the last item of the day of the video. It's a Nike Pitching Wedge. Uh, Nike Pitching Wedge. It sold for $22 plus shipping. I don't remember where I got this, so I'll have to look that up as well. So I paid $4 for this. I think I got this at uh, the Deseret Industries thrift store. I think I picked this up from there because $4 is about the only... They're the only place that I know that would charge $4 for a golf club. cannot get that to focus for the life of me, but it is the um, Nike CPR Pitching Wedge. Paid $4, sold that for $22 plus shipping. So all in for the day, right around $210 on those uh, eight items. $210 on eight items, so we're looking at about $25 per item, not including shipping. So... Not great, but not too bad. The uh, stereo was definitely the big winner of the day, but um, it's also fun to, to sell something that you pay nothing for, like the Oakley sunglasses case. Anyway, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to get more content like this in the future. Gonna keep you updated on the Bumblebee Good to Grow um, top, bottle topper, and of course, definitely keep you updated on the great gopher hunt. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care guys. Good luck with all of your ventures out there. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.